Excellent. And there's Alexis. Okay, Alexis is on the way. So I am going to go ahead and call to order the December 5th meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly at 2.02 p.m. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And I'm just going to do a quick sound check, um, and I'll start with you, Dr. Rhodes. I'm here, and I can be here, and I definitely can see other people. Great. And Ms. Bridges? Oh, I, we can hear, I can hear you at least. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, good to see you. And Dr. Shabazz. Present. Excellent. And Hala? Lord, present. <laughs> and you're outside. That's so, Is are you cold or are you bundled? A little, but it's going to keep the two-year-old happy, so. Yes. <laughs> Okay, and Pamela, I think you can hear us, and um, we were talking, so I know I could hear you, but... <laughs> yes, I can hear everyone. Okay, great. And Alexis, as I said, is on the way. Uh, oh, and Jennifer is here. Yay! Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> can you hear us? Okay, can we hear you? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Well, welcome. We have not met for a couple weeks, so uh, it's really good to see everyone and hope that everyone's had some rest and relaxation um, or maybe not. <laughs> um, so today we are going to, uh, we have a lot of items on our agenda, but I was hoping to focus us on a couple a couple particular items. We also have an item on the agenda that reads uh, League of Women Voters Racial Justice Committee Potential Collaboration. And that item will be joined by Meg Gage. Um, so if, um, Pamela, if you could keep an eye out for Meg, she's on the road and uh, we'll bring her in and sort of pause what we're doing when she's here. And welcome, Yvonne. Would you mind just, Hi. yeah, there you go. Hello, sorry. Hey, yeah. how are you doing? Hi, everybody. Good. So good to see you. Hi. Is that a necklace? Or? Oh, it's a scarf. Oh, it's beautiful. I love that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> trying to keep my neck warm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're going to uh, begin first before we sort of jump into agenda topics since we haven't been together for a couple of weeks and a lot has been going on, I think, at least in my individual life and I know also in the community. So I can imagine that others are having their own um, individual um, lives happening as well. So I just wanted to pause and see if there were any just general comments that anybody wanted to make or air or share or anything exciting news or not so exciting news, <laughs> anything that anybody would like to, like Dr. Shabazz, did you end up going to Evanston? I had that question for you. Okay. Oh, there you are. <laughs> you're muted. Oh, you're muted, Dr. Shabazz. Thank you. Just uh, letting you know that uh, from our area, Kathleen Anderson did attend. She may be in uh, in the audience as well. And if there's ever if there's an appropriate time, can uh, give us some uh, eyewitness or firsthand uh, account. I uh, have checked in with a number of people, and during the conference itself, uh, checked in with people, and it it, it looks to have been um, a really really powerful. Uh, gathering of uh, local reparations uh, organizers and advocates from all over the country. Thank you. And I do see that Kathleen is here and would love to bring Kathleen in to share an update on that if she is willing to do that. Um, we have a packed agenda and I have a 
council meeting that begins an hour early this evening. So, um, but I would still, I would love for Kathleen to come in now and just share. There she is. Hey, I took that picture of you. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Yes, you did. I, I, I updated it with the, your with that picture that you took. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, so, well, are you are you still in Evanston for the the conference, or are you back? No, I'm back. I'm in, sitting in the hallway in town hall. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, well, we would love. So, just in case people aren't following, um, Evanston and First Repair hosted their second um reparation symposium and last year dr shabazz and kathleen and myself were all there um and this year kathleen was there and there is a town hall that happened on friday night that i believe was recorded so if i can uh, once i get the recording i'll distribute that but please kathleen tell us how it was are you still there Oh, I was muted. <laughs> um, yes, I'm. It was it was a good weekend of people from all over the country. Um, some I saw last year's at last year's um, symposium, uh, and um, it was refreshing and good to hear what people are doing around the country as far as reparations goes, and uh, another exciting and um, I think important aspect for me was to see the numbers of white people who are supporting and advocating reparations. Mm. I think that uh, a collection of, of white people all over the country advocating and uh, pushing for reparations will be extremely helpful. So that was good to hear. Um, and uh, let's see, what else? Um, I did post the recording of the town hall on the New England in Cobra Facebook page. Great. So uh, people can go there and click onto that. It was just posted yesterday um, by the symposium folks. Okay. You can also find it on their first repair uh, Instagram page and also their um, first repair Facebook page. Okay. Um, so people are actively working towards reparations. Um, there's recently been a report back from the um, Providence, Rhode Island uh, reparations. Um, a law uh, or whatever it's called um, that uh, seems to open the door for uh, white Americans to access reparations. So that's a, a it's not a comp point of conversation that came up during the symposium, mm -hmm. but it's something for everybody to think about as Absolutely. we're looking as we're looking at reparations around the country. Um, so um, the, there's a group of us in the state of Massachusetts, three of whom were at the symposium, who are forwarding a ask letter to the newly elected governor, Maura Healy. Mm -hmm. And it's requesting her uh, executive order to establish a reparations commission to study and develop proposals for reparations for the state of Massachusetts. Um, so <clears throat> I'm going to be sending around that letter and asking people to um, sign on to it and uh, forward it to uh, Maura Healy's office. And I think the more people that she sees sending that in will be beneficial. Absolutely. That is super exciting. Thank you for sharing that. I am really looking forward to seeing that, Kathleen. Yeah. 
And also, thank you for bringing up the Providence uh, most recent dialogue around white Americans receiving reparations. Um, Earl Miller wrote to a couple of us this morning to say there was a CNN segment that was airing this morning um, in which Amherst was being discussed to some extent and our effort here. And I think just doing a quick Google search that it related to the Providence conversation, um, because of course that's controversial. And so we definitely should find whatever information we can about that and, um, and make sure that the committee gets a chance to see that. Awesome, well, thank you so much, Kathleen. Appreciate you sharing, appreciate you representing Amherst. Um, and really uh, just, that's so great that you made it down there. And when you have the letter ready to be signed on to, please do send it to myself and Pamela and Jennifer and we'll make sure that everybody gets it. Yeah, will do. All right. And feel free to hang out. <laughs> Um, so, uh, wonderful. That's great. Um, so any other, like any questions or comments about any of that before we move on? Okay, great. All right. So as I said, uh, in, in email to you folks about, uh, what I've been up to in the past couple of weeks, um, I have, Yes, Jennifer. I'm I'm a little bit lost where we are in the agenda. I'm sorry. I just yeah. don't, I want to make sure that you guys approve the minutes. That's all. Sure. Why don't we go ahead and do that right now so that we don't forget or get cut, you know, time cut. Um, that, that, that would be great. If everybody has had a chance, I'm going to read the dates out and then we'll approve them as one motion unless somebody says I haven't read this one and wants to pull it out. So we're approving uh, May 2nd, May 9th, August 1st, August 15th, September 12th, and September 19th. Thank you, Jennifer, for getting all of those to us. Um, so unless somebody wants to pull one of those out, um, can I, I, I'm making a motion to approve those minutes and looking for a second, please. Second. Thanks, Dr. Shabazz. Okay, so I'll start the vote with you, Dr. Shabazz. Yes, Shabazz. Okay, and Hala? Yes, Hala. Hala, yes. Okay, um, Ms. Bridges? Yes. Okay, great. And uh, Yvonne? Yvonne Mendez, yes. Great. And Dr. Rhodes? Oh, bye. Thank you. And I'm an I as well. All right. Uh, so let me just take a quick peek here. Okay. So in terms of where we are on the agenda, a quick agenda review, uh, we just approved the minutes and um, we had some conversation with Kathleen Anderson about the first repair reparation symposium that happened over the weekend in which she represented us. Um, we, had, uh, we have on here our discussion around engagement and continuing with our consultation campaign. And then, and that's where I really wanted to start our focus. I wanted to share some of the feedback that I've received in the community from the members that I've been speaking with. And also, um, I would like for us to find a date that we can host uh, our next outreach event and just have a general conversation about that. And then the other piece that I wanted to make sure that we talk about, which is also under this agenda item, is the community survey. And, and I, as I said in the email, I have some, I've brought um, something for you to review and have some thoughts about that. So in the past couple of weeks, I've been uh, trying to meet some residents of African heritage uh, who maybe haven't been at the listening session or who we haven't heard from, who I know 
have influence in different communities um, within the Black community in Amherst. Um, the two that I wanted to focus on, because that's where the feedback, I think, right now is really helpful for what we're working on, is uh, a meeting that I had with Sid Ferreira um, and a meeting that I had with Paul Wiley. And so both of those meetings were really helpful in um, giving feedback. The particular feedback that I received from Sid Ferreira, and actually it was sort of in the form of an idea or a concept for us to consider was, so he received specific feedback that there were some elders in the community who weren't able to get to the listening session that we hosted in person. So he suggested that we um, plan a, a listening session as soon as we could that is either completely virtual, which is my preference, but we can talk about that, or a hybrid virtual in-person event. Um, and then he further extrapolated and said that from that listening session, which um, I think we've already talked about uh, providing more of an educational component at the beginning of the next listening session, maybe around the areas of injury and harm and some other just foundational um, informational pieces that would be helpful to those who are attending. Um, but then to try to, from that listening session, identify individuals in the community that are in subgroups of the larger Black community um, that can sort of act as liaisons to our committee um, and have uh, the ability to impact and influence. And this is something I think that Jennifer had we I talked to Jennifer about a while ago. She had a similar um, thinking around this, I think. Um, so that those individual liaisons can then um, provide information to their community, their sub communities, and then get information to provide back to us. And by building that buy in, you know, because we're a committee of seven, and we certainly don't represent every person of African heritage in Amherst and uh, being able to sort of have those individual leaders that can influence their individual communities, I think uh, was Sid's concept. Um, and he thought that the listening session, if we can do specific outreach to folks, get them there into the room or into the virtual space, um, and then invite them sort of post listening session to continue discussions within their communities. So I'll pause there and just see if anybody has any comments or discussion related to that. Right now, we can come back to it. Okay, um, so I would like for us um, to identify a date. I'm thinking January is probably going to be, as I said in my email, the next possible time. Um, I think that doing an on an all virtual event will give us a more simplistic sort of, uh, so that our capacity isn't spent on trying to find a location and set up a location and um, all of the equipment and everything that comes with that. Um, so, and parking and whatnot. So, um, the second conversation I had, uh, that I think is relevant to what we're discussing was with Paul Wiley and Paul, um, I think was very interested and supportive of the work that we're doing and wanted, uh, certainly to know when our next listening session was going to happen. Um, he works with some different organizations in the community that he thought would benefit from learning about our listening sessions and has offered to help us with that. Um, and he had similar ideas about reaching uh, I think the conversation that we had really related to trying to reach folks in the community and how we talked about at the last listening session, uh, 
we we know who was in the room, but who, as Dr. Rhodes said, was not in the room and what were the reasons for that. And so pausing there, um, is everybody good with a January, a January virtual only event? If you're not, raise your hand and tell us why. <laughs> Okay. And I think uh, we'll do some educational programming up front for that. And we can talk about that as we get a little bit closer. Are there any dates I had in the email referenced Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday nights in maybe the second or third week in January? One thought occurred to me after I sent that email about whether we wanted to capture in particular, you mass college students, but they could, of course, attend virtually. But the likelihood is that we'll, and I'm curious what uh, Dr. Shabazz would have to say about that as he works at the university. Um, do you think timing, uh, do we want to capture UMass students, Dr. Shabazz, and would they be e more easily captured if they were actually on campus when we hosted the virtual event? So <clears throat> uh, in, we are on a new calendar for the spring. Um, classes don't resume until February 6th, till the uh, first week in February. And as such, students are um, in, in a wide range of uh, involvements through the entire January, um, month of January or, or J term as it's called. So some will be in various kinds of uh, uh, online, some will be um, uh, classes, some will be doing study abroad, some will be in a, just a, a wide range of things. So it's really um, uh, a, a new area for this kind of ca uh, calendar. So I just can't say what kind of uh, participation um, we might secure and, and what kind of outreach we could really do. Um, maybe if we had it nailed down today, exactly when it would be in January, we can try in this last week or so of classes to really push push the word and and get people uh, uh, thinking about, uh, you know, reserving that date. But if we don't get them in the next, um, uh, have the ability to kind of let them know about it in the next uh, few days, uh, they're going to then go into finals and then they'll be dispersed dispersed out there. So it'll be, um, would be rather hard at that point to try to organize them and secure them for a time when, when technically they're, um, many of them are off the clock as far as uh, Amherst and in-class instruction at Amherst is concerned. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so I'm looking at a calendar and I see that the week, so January 16th is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, what would it be like for folks either um, on the 17th, 18th, or 19th? Uh, yes, Pamela, please. So January 17th is the National Day of uh, Racial Healing that's sponsored by the Kellogg Foundation. And Jen and I are in the process of planning an event for that date. So if we, I mean, we could happily join, um, invite people to attend our event and connect with reparations that could be a theme, but we certainly, we're going to plan some event for that day. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for, so do you think that might be a lot then in that same week, given the Monday's a holiday, Tuesday, we would want folks to focus on that particular event. So do we want to look at either the week of the 9th or the 23rd? Yeah. What happened with the 9th or that first week in January? We can, yeah, I, I don't think we should do, I haven't checked town council. I think I have a town council meeting on the 9th. Um, but we could certainly do the 10th, 11th, or 12th. We should check the community calendar. Let me see if I can pull that. You, do you have that up, Pamela, right now, by any chance? I know, or were you just thinking along the lines of the racial healing day? I can pull it up. 
Uh, I don't, but um, Jen or I would be able to pull it up. So. All right. And I'm pulling it up right now because if I think if we could try to settle on a date today, let's see here. All right. January. Right now, it looks like the 11th has an event um, and that's at 10 to 12. That's the, the uh, senior center cafe that they're doing. Um, I don't see any other events. So for for committee members, which night of that week beside Monday or Friday would be best? Anyone have a preference or something that doesn't work? Uh, yeah, what day are we talking about? So we'd be talking about the 10th, 11th, or 12th of January. Tuesday, uh, when, yeah, you might have, when do you have yeah, The 10th, 10th is a uh, school committee meeting. Okay. So I think Thursday nights can be really good for these events um, sometimes, but maybe we want to do Wednesday, Wednesday night to try to, in case Thursday people start drifting into the weekend. <laughs> Does that work for everybody? So that would be Wednesday, January 11th, all virtual. Yeah, okay. Wednesday's better for me than Thursday. So, yeah. Okay. Ms. Bridges, does that work for you? So far, that's fine. Yes. Is this okay. an evening event? What, yeah, what time? Yeah. yeah, what time? I think we definitely want to do it in the evening. And, and maybe I felt like the last one was a little bit rushed. It was an hour and a half that we had set it up for, especially if we're going to do educational. I'm thinking that we'd want to do 630 to 830 or 7 to 9. Um, depending on, you know, what people think would be best in terms of people who have children or definitely don't want to keep people up too late if, so what are we thinking? 6.30 to 8.30 or 7 to 9? Whoever says it is going to. Yeah, well, 6.30 it. is a good time. Okay. <laughs> All right, great. So let's do 6.30 to 8.30, January 11th, Wednesday, January 11th. And details, more details to be determined. I will get our postcard. Yes, Pamela. You can't, you have to put your. <laughs> Sorry. It's likely that uh, Jen and I might have a conflict for the 11th, but one of us would be able to attend if both could, because uh, Wednesdays are, um, tends to be our HRC or the CSSJC meeting mm -hmm. in the evening, but um, we can, uh, you know, one of us will be able to attend. You probably won't have us both. Uh, Okay, that's great. And we would want those committees to be involved if um, as as if if as much as they would like to be. So I could also give them an early heads up so that maybe they would not plan a meeting that particular <laughs> night. <laughs> um, but that's up to them, of course. But that makes sense. Okay. Um, all right, good. And then um I, I'll I'll get the postcard updated too, and ask um, Bree if she could update the website, and we'll we'll do all that. But let's we'll start getting the word out. That's great though that we have a date. Um. Okay. So let me just check to see if Meg is here yet. Um. I don't see her yet. So she should be here soon. Um. A quick update. Yes, Jennifer. Are you um, going to have a flyer for this event? Yeah. Okay. Because yep. I'll send it to the PGOs and to other places. I just want to make sure we can get it out to as many folks as possible. Thank you so much. That would be so awesome. Yeah. If I will get you that updated uh, flyer as soon as possible so that you can start getting it out there. And if there are any other ideas about uh, how we, I'll of course send it to all of the same people that we did last time, but if there are, and, and, and do individual outreach, but if there are other ideas about how to reach more folks, I am meeting with uh, Talib, who is the, the principal at the high school. Um, hopefully 
coming up this coming week. So that's another, I think getting it out to the schools is really, really important to Jennifer's point. Um, so, uh, great. So I did want to give a quick update because it's on the agenda and I just, I think most of us are following the news, but, uh, in the town, but there was an agenda item about the July 5th police youth incident. And I wanted to let the committee know that the council had another very thorough discussion of this matter a couple of weeks back now and took several actions, including passing a pretty comprehensive motion, as well as some other motions um, that I know Pamela and Jennifer will be very involved in. So I don't know, Pamela or Jennifer, if you wanted to comment, there's it, no need to comment if you don't have anything, but just wanted to give an update to the committee about that. All so, right. Um, I, I can just say that I have had a, uh, an opportunity to briefly look at the motions that were passed and um, that the town manager and I had already discuss some of the initiatives that, that are ongoing. So that work has begun and is ongoing, but I I, um, I have uh, not sat down with Jennifer to plan like in detail what the calendar of the events responses will be. But yeah, um, we're working on it, I guess is the summary. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, that's great. And I should also mention that Jennifer and I met with, um, thanks to Pamela, who organized and set us up with folks over at Hampshire College. Uh, I, I can't remember the title of, is it the, will you, do you remember it, Pamela? <laughs> the title, yeah, go ahead. So I, I I'm probably going to uh, misspeak as well, but it's uh, basically the vice uh, president for diversity, equity, and justice. I, I think they're using justice instead of inclusion. So it, it, it may be diversity, equity, and justice. Um, so. That's what I remember too. Yeah. And we met with the team and I, I it was a, a really another really good outreach and we'll certainly want to include them and notify them in relation to the upcoming listening session as well. Um, okay, so I have something to share here. Uh, and just to give a little uh, background into my thinking and, and gathering of information over the past couple of weeks as it relates to a survey. We as a committee had discussed getting a survey out into the community and Dr. Rhodes did a lot of work um, gathering different information from the Dunahue Institute and um, thinking about uh, doing a representative survey versus just a casual survey is what is what Kerry from the Dunahue Institute calls it. Um, and there was on the table a couple of weeks ago when the July 5th fifth incident was being discussed, the possibility of a townwide comprehensive survey that would touch on reparations, public health, community policing. It was briefly discussed and Irv and Lynn and myself met with Curry Spitzer from the Dunahue Institute to talk a bit about what that might look like. However, it doesn't appear that the town is going to move forward with that at this time or that there will be many more discussions that need to occur for such a larger survey to occur. Um, so I think Dr. Shabazz, I don't know if he, oh, he's in the audience. <laughs> um, he must have got, okay. Um, so the my thinking around this is we don't have the luxury of time right now given when our charge ends um and there's no i think harm in sending a more casual survey out to residents of african heritage um as best as we can do that in particular we may want to consider sending it to the entire community, but we'll definitely want to be able to hear the voices of Black residents um, as we're starting to think about our report. 
And I happened to run into Carrie in a coffee shop actually just a couple of days ago. And she gave me some really good tips about doing a more casual survey and um, how we might reach people. And then also not sort of um, letting go of the idea of a larger survey that might come at a later time that's more representative. Um, So what I've done, and I'll share my screen here, is I essentially copied our our inclusion portal and then i added some additional questions that is and that's the piece that i i want us to to talk about today uh let's see here um would jennifer or pamela be able to enable me to share please So it's saying the host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, okay. Now I'm good. All right. And so um, can everyone see my screen now? Okay. So this is a copy of our inclusion portal. I haven't changed sort of any of the language yet up here, but um, we have the, you know, we ask the email, we ask for a name. Um, we have these basic questions like, do you identify as Black African heritage? Is Amherst your primary residence? Are you over 18? Your address? Are you currently a student? And then these are the new questions that I've added that I wanted to discuss. They're not questions right now. They're really just blurbs. <laughs> um, so let's go one by one. The first one is um, a question that relates to the five areas of injury. Um, and my thinking that is that we would provide either a link to those or we would a, a, real, a real easy, simple link to something that takes us to a simple discussion of those. Um, or we would have a little information here. Uh, Dr. Rhodes, I see your hand is raised. I, uh, just a question in relationship to um, the earlier part of this form. Yeah. Uh, and, and if we were going to be sending this out, I'm assuming we would not be asking for names, addresses, and anything like that, because it really certainly should be anonymous. Oh, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Um... Yeah. Do we want to, so we want it to be entirely anonymous or, yes. or do we, we do. Okay. I, I Although wasn't. Although I think that you, that you can add something at the end if someone wants you to know who they are. You and could. That's, it's optional. Yeah, it's totally it should optional. Be, yeah. Those should be optional at the end, but at the beginning, uh, they sh- it should be anonymous because most surveys that are sent out, they don't ask for that kind of your, your home address, you who you are. It, yeah. But age, 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 ethnicity, those kind of things are appropriate, but certainly not uh, names and addresses. Perfect. Okay. So I, I think I, there's a question about residency, right? Yeah. So it's. Um, yeah, those it, questions are fine. fine. Yeah. Yeah. So we would want to move. So actually, the, they've been taken out um, here, but we, so we would want to remove email. Um, and then name, but provide something at the end that says, if you would like to provide your personal information. Okay. That's easy. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, so this first one here is, um, thinking about which of the areas of harm do you think Amherst should be focusing on? Um, and do we want to have them rate them in order or do we want to have them check off, you know, a list of all of the ones that they think? Um, do we want to give an area for them to talk about their own personal experience in relation to a particular harm? Um, And then are there other areas of injury or harm that haven't been included in those five? And then do we want folks to think about whether, and this question may not be appropriate for this actual, but the community versus individual benefits. 
Um, how, how are we looking at that? And that might be in a different, I think I added that in the wrong area, but let's just stick with this. So in terms of a question about the areas of injury, what sort of, um, way would, what feedback do you have so that I could create a question here, um, that would get at what we're trying to get at? Where, where would, where would you have the information that they could go to that would indicate the five areas of harm? I think what I would do, Irv, is I would create another Google Doc um, that had a very succinct one pager about the five areas of harm. Um, I know Dr. Shabazz has something of the like that I've already seen, um, but we could approve something here. And, and then the link would just be a short like I would do a tiny link or something that would take them to that Google Doc um, that would be online. All right. So that's the first. Next, the question. The other question about that is you you have about uh, let me see three or four questions within that one area. Yeah. Uh, and that is problematic, I think, because it, they they should have their own space. In other words, you, they need to be broken out in, ter in terms of their own individual questions. Because the one of them says uh, something about rate them in order. Well, you know, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. uh, you'd have to spell that out in some kind of way and have that listed as right. a theory. I, I think that the other thing that I, I would I would suggest is that if if we're going to go this route, that we really should sit down with Carrie or someone else who's experiencing uh, putting out questions for questionnaires or surveys to guide us in terms of how we uh, uh, structure these questions and also how we even uh, ask them. Yeah, I think that's a really great idea. And I, I, I think that Carrie would be open to doing that without any, you know, just as a sort of friendly um, collaboration with us without getting into some sort of contract around it uh that you know so okay let's hold that thought i think that's a great idea dr rhodes to do that and so i've sort of just created these three buckets that i think we need to ask about but i think if we can have carrie help us to formulate the questions um, in the way that they'll be best received, that would be very helpful. And I see- Are going to take off our shoes? Oh, I don't- oh, Sorry. Oh, that's <laughs> two-year-old stuff, right? <laughs> that's cute. Um, Jennifer? I was just going to say something very similar to what Dr. Rhodes said about rate them in order. And like you should- you can form it so that each one has its own area in question format, but none of that necessarily matters if you're going to bring it to someone else, because then you could also hyperlink each of the words that you put there. So yeah. that the definition of the word comes out. Oh yeah. That's a really good idea. Yep. I know what you mean. Okay. So okay. that you have the five and they're bulleted down and then people can pick what they want. You can do it so people can pick one, two, three, four, or five. Yeah. And then be able to comment on those individual areas of injury. Yeah. All right. And so the piece about personal experience, um, I'm curious what folks think about that. It seems that's more getting at um, like oral kind of history information. Like I, I can imagine certain folks might really, it would be like listening, like the listening session, but in a written format, Dr. Rhodes. Uh, yeah, I should have my hand down, but anyway, I will comment on that is that I guess, are we going to mix and mix and match here in relationship to the, uh, how questions are answered? One obviously one is multiple choice. One is just ranked choice. Another one is whatever. In other words, how are we going to structure these questions in a way in terms of how they're going to be answered? Because if you look at answers that where people give their own individual opinions and they can write those down, that's one thing. 
or the other one is multiple choice, rank choice, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a good carry question, I think, um, because I do think we want to make this really simple and accessible. And we want to give people the opportunity who only want to take three minutes to do this, to take three minutes, and the people who want to take as many minutes as they want to have that flexibility as well. So um, I think we would probably end up mixing and matching, but we definitely want to do that in an organized way. I would imagine you want it so that people who want to take three minutes to do it can boom, 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 take three minutes. And then at the end, you have an opportunity for people to speak more broadly. Yes, Yvonne. Um, I was going to say that um, if you really want to, it's really valuable to actually get some of the personal experience in writing, you know, um, I would do it as a separate optional question that goes along with this so that it's some people who want to can and people who don't want to share anything personal don't have to. Excellent. Okay, excellent. And I imagine, and Yvonne, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but do we need to put some sort of disclosure that says, you know, that this information is being used to create a report that will eventually be made public? Um, you can keep yourself anonymous, but, uh, you know, I'm just, so that's another question. I don't think it helps. I don't think it hurts to do that. Yeah. Just so and that I also think that once you do that, you have to be careful with the information that you gather and who has access to it. Once exactly. you say that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where I really need to talk to Pamela. And I think Bree and Jennifer, because we had talked about that in a previous meeting in terms of collecting information and wherever it, wherever it lives, somebody has access to it. Um, so keeping it secure. <laughs> yeah. So this, this form ends up on the towns. Is this a, is this a committee Google drive that's secure just for the committee or is it a town Google drive where everyone in the town has you know, like on town council or whatever has access to the drive. It's a Michelle uh, drive right now. Oh, then, <laughs> then that's all you need. Because the, 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 the whatever, who, you know, it comes, the responses come in on a spreadsheet and the spreadsheet's attached to wherever the survey lives. So it would be on your drive, right? Yeah, right now it is, but that I don't think would be the appropriate way to keep it. I think um, Bree had some really good ideas about how to do that in the sort of, and I think maybe Pamela is going to speak to that. Okay. Please, Pamela. Yeah, I, um, <clears throat> I think it's probably okay to gather the information, but if the information is going to be used for the town, purposes, we probably do need a disclaimer or some waiver if people are going to self identify. And it would be subject to public records because you're going to put it into a report. So um, I, I'm not certain just having it on um, uh, Michelle's uh, Google Drive will get us out of those situations. And we really should, you know, lean into having a conversation with Brianna about that. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. That's and and this is literally just for our visual purposes um, right now. Uh, yes, Hala. Thank you. I was also going to say um, there could be an option of I'm sharing to share this information with the committee checkbox, or I'm also I'm sharing to share it with the public in a report. So. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So that way the committee, if somebody shares just to share with the committee, it's, we have it, we have that voice in our resources when we're creating the report, but we're not actually reporting anything directly from that person's survey into the report. Is that kind of what you're saying? Okay. I'll come back to Hala <laughs> on that. Um, I saw Jennifer. I'm going to go to Jennifer and then Dr. Rook. Oh, go ahead, I'm Hala. Sorry. Yeah, what was the question you asked me? Sorry. The question was how I understood what you said is that if somebody checked the box that the information was for the committee, then that information would be 
that voice would be in our resource kind of our consciousness for the creation of support but it nothing direct from that particular survey would be used in the report correct that okay that way they can choose yes i don't mind this story being public or if it's a story that then can identify someone i just want this privately for you all to know this lived experience here in amherst and i apologize work and work you know how it is yeah don't worry no no apology necessary thank you for being here um okay jennifer and then dr rhodes so I was just going to say when the CSWG did their um, survey, all of the results came back to me personally, like not personally, but through my AmherstMA.gov, and we sent it out that way, and then we linked, we created links to it and put it on flyers and sent it to people individually. So, um, right, yeah. And I would just you always just put name and then optional you can write just write optional next to it so that people know that they don't have to perfect that's a really good way to yeah so you actually put name and then just put optional and and then it prompts them but they know right okay um and i yeah i like the idea that you the the way that that worked with the CSWG that sounds good for you and pamela to be able to get the sort of data and then um you know, put it together for us to review as a committee. Um, Dr. Rhodes. So the question for me is, if we're going to do, we're going to do this survey. I, I keep asking myself, what is, what are the questions or that we really want to have answered via this survey that, that will help get us further towards our objectives, A, for the report, B, uh, in terms of how we structure reparations, et cetera. So what are those questions that get us to those two objectives? And those are the questions that I would want to focus upon. Okay, and do you feel, so I, I have the, the areas of um, injury and harm. I have, who do you think should be eligible for reparation benefits? And I went back to Dr. Shabazz's piece about residential lineage identity. Are there different benefits for different people? So the sort of who's eligible is one, the areas of harm is another. And then the third is how the funds should be used. Um, are they related to the areas of injury and community versus individual? So I think the three buckets that I have right now are the areas of harm, the eligibility question, and the use of funds question. Um, and then, of course, we can create an open-ended opportunity for people to share whatever. But I think those three buckets, um, that's what I had in my mind. But if there are other buckets that we want to cover, um, then, you know, again, within these three buckets, we'll work with Kerry to formulate, hopefully, to formulate the questions. But are there additional buckets? I guess those buckets are fine. I guess the, the the detailed in terms of the questions that are asked within there are going to be the most critical. For instance, if I go to how to use reparation funds, uh, if if I don't have any prompts, or if I'm not familiar with it, if I don't have any background with it, nor do I know anything about uh, reparations here in Amherst, how do I answer that question? Uh, and that's one, and the two is, uh, if that question is going to be asked, are we going to do pick A, B, C, D, or E? And anyways, it's, I think that, uh, again, I, I think that Carrie can help us with this in terms of structuring these questions. Yeah, and if you, Dr. Rhodes, would be willing to work with me um, on that, that would be fantastic. I think your background lends itself very naturally to this, and I... Um, would appreciate that. And I also think that we will need a cover letter, um, even if folks aren't you know, gonna spend the time to read it, just to, as Herb said, provide some general background information about Amherst's initiative. Um, so that if it's coming to somebody that has never read anything in the paper, doesn't know anything about it, they at least have some information. Um, so, 
So I'll take all of that. If there aren't any other comments or questions at this moment, I'm going to ask um, Meg Gage to join us, but let me stop the share here. If you have any other buckets or ideas about this, just please email them to me um, and Pamela and Jennifer, and then we'll work with them um, to get them incorporated into our process. Um, so Meg Gage is joining us um, in a moment, and I think she's here. Um, and so I'm just going to frame this briefly for folks, um, on the agenda, as I said, uh, we have an item league of women voters, racial justice committee, potential collaboration. Um, we've spoken or heard from Meg previously, I think in public comment, uh, the league of women voters has a strong racial justice committee that's been working on a variety of issues and supporting, um, our new initiatives, uh, CRESS and the DEI department um, very robustly. And so there's uh, been discussion about a potential collaboration or collaborations. And some of us have had smaller discussions about this, including Dr. Shabazz and Meg and myself um, and maybe some others. Um, but Meg is here today to, uh, we're going to sort of start fresh and um, <laughs> have that conversation as if we, you know, with an open mind and heart and, and then uh, the committee will discuss it. So welcome, Meg. Thank you. Uh, would you like me to describe the project? Um, yeah. I really appreciate, appreciate this. And uh, I, I uh, because the meeting was changed from last week, I was uh, apologize if i didn't show up at the right time at the meeting, but uh, we're traveling. Um, we at the Racial Justice Committee of the League of Women Voters have been wanting to do one of our se uh, public sessions. We've been calling them Judy Brooks conversations. This might or might not fit into that category, but we've wanted to have a conversation with the public at large about reparations and to take advantage of the fact that Sandy Darity and his wife, Kirsten Mullen, have written this uh, extraordinarily important book on reparations. Uh, and several of us know him uh, and have been communicating with him about this idea. Um, I have felt, I've been the one organizing this project, uh, partly because I think I know, knew him from before when he used to, he grew up in Amherst. Our, our dads worked together. Um, and they would like to do this, come to not physically come on Zoom, but they would be on Zoom to do a, a lead a, a discussion about their book and uh, uh, give the community an opportunity to understand reparations better, what some of the different communities are doing, what the different options are. And for me, it doesn't make sense for the League of Women Voters Racial Justice Committee to have a big session on reparations without collaborating with the assembly, which is all about reparations. There is a lot of our different opinions about what is the correct route for reparations. And I feel it's healthy to have those discussions out in the open. And uh, I don't see them as contentious at all, just a chance to talk about what's one of the most important uh, programs right now, ideas of, of the cur current work on racial justice is reparations. Um, and so I'm hoping that we'll be able to collaborate on this. Uh, the Racial Justice Committee and the African Heritage Reparations Assembly, we're willing to do a lot of the work, um, but I would hope we would share, you know, we would really work on it together. I, what I'm, I say we'd be willing to do a lot of the work because I know you're extremely busy. You have a huge agenda and I wouldn't want to add one more burden to what you have to do. Um, although we would take our collaboration seriously and it's, it's a really a partnership if we agree to do this. Um, the deal is that Sandy and Kirsten normally get $6,000 for a speaker fee when they do a presentation and they're uh, willing to do it for us instead uh, if we buy $2,500 worth of the books. I think you probably all know there's a second edition that's out now. I think it's in paperback too. Um, so what we would like to do is to 
find a way to buy the books. The Jones Library has a budget for this kind of thing, for example, um, but I haven't engaged them yet because I wanted to be sure we're what we're talking about. But my, our idea is that we could have a book reading group. Uh, either people would buy the books or we would provide them. Of course, providing them would be better because uh, people would be more, have a greater incentive to join the group if the book was free. Um, and we would buy them from Amherst Books locally so that we'd be helping our local bookstore. So there would be a book group, reading group project in conjunction with their presentation. I don't know if we would do the book reading before or after or in the middle of, uh, you know, would the, their presentation would be in the middle of it, but that's the sort of framework of what we're thinking about. So I'm gonna stop talking and see what you all think. It's good to see you all. I, my, on my iPad, I only see Michelle, but I know others of you who are there. <laughs> oh, that's frustrating. Well, hopefully when others speak, you'll be able to, it will. Yeah. Um, um, thank you, Meg. And so uh, the way I'm going to structure this, Meg, is I'm going to um, give the committee the opportunity to ask you questions. Um, and then what we'll do, I explained earlier before you got here, Meg, we have a big council meeting tonight and it starts at 530 an hour early. Um, oh. And I have to get myself prepared. So We'll probably discuss this as a committee at our next meeting. Um, Great. So I want to open it up at this moment. I have a couple just logistical questions, but before I uh, ask those, are there members of the committee that have questions they would like to ask in relationship to what Meg is proposing? It seems pretty logical to me. Hi, Meg, it's Yvonne. Hey. Hi, Yvonne. Oh, good, hey. now I see you. Yeah, good to see you. Um, if we do this, maybe you and I can work together on it. <laughs> again, what? I know. That would like, be the, like the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's fine. Sadly, I have to leave. It's three o'clock and I have another, I have to make my way into an in-person meeting. Wow. No worries. Oh, wow. Thank you, Yvonne. But, yeah, I think it sounds like a great idea. And if I can help out or do something, you know, I'm happy to do that um, once we identify great. what that looks like. But it makes a lot of sense to me. Thanks. All right. Awesome. Um, we'll see you. Yeah, we'll see you soon, Yvonne. Thank you. Yvonne and I work together creating Amherst Cinema many years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's awesome. I didn't know Yvonne was a part of that as well. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so any other logistical questions or otherwise for Meg? I, I had a question about when um, Dr. Darity, if you, do you have any sense of timing for when this um, pot potential event would occur? Well, they had proposed January, but now uh, we we uh, put it on pause because of all the other things that were happening in Amherst. Um, so I don't think it could happen before March, but we would have to negotiate that with them. But we could control that by saying we can't do it until March or till April or whatever. Okay. Um, I don't think there's a rush. I just think it's important to do it. Sure. Yeah. And I, so sort of a follow up to that, Meg, if, if you could um, maybe look into an idea that I had around this is um, I, I spoke on a panel at Boston College School of Law a couple weeks ago that had a variety oh. of um, people. You weren't busy enough already. <laughs> <laughs> um, folks were bringing different perspectives about reparations. And um, it was really interesting to be there with people that had different views about it, but were able to have a really great discussion. So one thought that came out of that is continuing the work with the Boston College School of Law and oh. uh, the others that they work with to create a patent and, and also with, um, pretty high up administrators at UMass, the discussion has occurred to have a panel um, that would present different perspectives on Great. reparations. And so wondering if Dr. Darity um, and Kirsten would be open to this being not just a solo show, but being a, uh, a perspective sort of panel. Okay. 
Let me go to um, Ms. Bridges though, because I see her hands up. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Deb. Um, <laughs> Hi, Deborah. Hi, Pet. Hi, Meg. Hi, Meg. Hi, Deborah. Good to see you. I love, I love the idea. I'm at my brother David's house, by the way. Oh, tell him I said hi, please. I will. He might walk in, but we shouldn't do that during the meeting. <laughs> um, I love the idea of talking with Sandy. Um, he was president of my high school class, and I really admire his contributions to reparations for, to discuss them. So that would be, a, that's a great idea. Awesome. That's so cool that he was president <laughs> of your class. <laughs> what year was that, Ms. Bridges? Never mind. <laughs> but my brother, whose place I'm at right now, is was in the same class. <laughs> so I think. No. No, he was no, no two years David older. Was, right. Had, sorry. David was with, with my brother. Right. And Rob was in your class. Rob was in my class. Yeah. <laughs> and um, dad, anyway, my dad was, um, it was very good friends with Sandy's dad. Mm. Awesome. Okay. Well, um, what I'll do given the timing here is we'll make yeah. sure we have a more thorough and robust discussion about this next time so that we can report back to you. If you could, in the meantime, see about the question that I posed, um, that would be great. And we can talk offline more about what I was. Sure. Right. Um, and I'm, if I can be helpful at your next meeting, let me know. I totally understand the crunch of time and um, thanks for making time today. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming and um, feel free to hang out. We have to still do a public comment period. So oh, I'm going to okay. go ahead and call for that now. Um, so if yes, Ms. Bridges, is your hand still up? Oh, okay. <laughs> It is, but it's okay. Great. Um, all right. Any, okay. Anything else for Meg before I call for public comment? All right. Great. Okay. So if, um, you would like, and, um, Dr. Shabazz, are you also in the audience or do we have a junior in the audience potentially? Oh, cool. Um, okay. <laughs> Um, so if you'd like to make public comment, go ahead and raise your hand. I will read our statement quickly. Uh, let's see here. Um, during the public comment period, I'll recognize members of the public when called on. Please identify yourself by stating your name, pronouns, and address. And you are welcome to express your views for up to three minutes. And we will not Normally we won't respond, but we will certainly be listening um, closely. So I see um, one hand is raised. I think it's Ronan, Ronan. Um, so please welcome. I wonder, oh. Sometimes when they're moving over, you, they, oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, thank you. Sorry, I've never joined as a panelist before, so I wasn't sure exactly what I was supposed to do for a second. Um, so this is a little bit different. Um, I really appreciated being able to listen on your meeting. I appreciate you having me. Um, I'm a student journalist at UMass Amherst. And I'm writing a story on um, not African heritage reparations, but Native American reparations, a magazine piece. And uh, I contacted your guys' office um, a couple of weeks ago and I followed up. And I was just looking to see if I could reach any of you to have a conversation um, about some of the work that you guys are doing in relation to the broader conversation of reparations. Um, so yeah. Thank you. And I normally wouldn't do this, but because um, I think this is a great opportunity for members to be able to ask you, usually in public comment, just so you know, we're not supposed to sort of respond to public comment. But I think um, we did, I did, uh, Jennifer and I included Counselor Anika Lopes in the communication with you. So um, mm -hmm. I, I hope that um, you'll be able to get in touch with Anika to speak to this. But are there other questions that folks have that they would, could you pronounce your name for us? Yeah, it's Ronan. 
Ronan, easy. Okay. <laughs> that Ronan, uh, any questions that, uh, that any of our members would like to ask Ronan in relation to this? Okay. I'm not seeing any hands, but, oh, I do see Dr. Shabazz. Yeah, um, not so much a question, uh, Ronan, but if you um, email me at shabazz at umass.edu, I'll be happy to put you in touch with one of my uh, doctoral students who is uh, working on this topic uh, in a paper with me this semester. And uh, perhaps there's, um, uh, uh, might be fruitful to what you're, you're writing to connect with, with him. Yeah, great. No, I'd really appreciate that. Great. Um, any other comments or questions for Ronan? Yes, Ms. Bridges. Um, yeah, he definitely should get in touch with um, Anika. Yeah. Okay. So yes. if he has information, you should. You, hi, Ronan. Hi. I don't. I don't have Anika's information. It's Anika, and what is her last name? Lopes. L O P E S. And actually, Ronan, you do, because when really? I responded um, to you, I copied Anika. On ah, I see. Okay. <laughs> so you had, that's her town email. So if you, you could use that to reach out to her. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Bridges, do you want to provide, if you want to provide your information, I'll loop you in with Ronan on the email so you don't have to read it out uh, in the public meeting. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, and Ms. Bridges, would you just say quickly why we're, why it would be relevant, like why we're suggesting to Ronan um, that you and or Anika would speak to Ronan on indigenous uh, reparations? Yes. You're muted, Ms. Bridges. Indigenous, well, if he gets in touch with her and speaks on the um, ancestral bridges and that will that will give him a lot of information when she speaks to him about that yeah absolutely okay <laughs> all right awesome so um dr shabazz is your hand still raised okay good all right um if is there anybody else um thank you ronan thanks so much for joining us <laughs> yes thank you <laughs> All right, anybody else like to make public comment, please raise your hand. All right, um, wonderful. Well, thank you. Oh, I see um, Emil Shabazz Jr. Uh, here and has their hand raised. See, there you go. Good afternoon. I think you have to unmute yourself. Let me, if you're having um, difficulty, let me see. There you go. Is this okay? Yes, you're good. <laughs> okay. Um, I came in a, a little later, uh, but I saw some of the... Um, the the form that you guys are are um making um and i guess i had some questions about that but uh i guess i guess my own opinion is that um it's um these are very deep questions and even for myself they it's calling on a lot of creative power to try to um make a make answers to those things. Um, so I guess I was gonna suggest that um, for some, you know, just first information about what the, what the need could be for some people mm -hmm. is that it could be, you know, multiple choice and other, or, you know, something additional that a person could think of. Um, but to maybe just try to work to simplify the form. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. 
That is really great feedback. Thank you. Um, and I don't know what your interest level is or your capacity, but uh, would love to keep you um, engaged in this. So would be happy to share it as we go along with it with you for feedback. And of course, you're okay. always, always welcome to come to a meeting. But <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll um, as I keep getting the links to to look on, maybe I'll come in a bit earlier and I'll see what you guys are really talking about. Excellent. No. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Thanks. All right. Wonderful. Um, did you have to go, Miss Bridges? Are you leaving? Okay, you're no, good. You're I'm just fine. waving. <laughs> okay. Just, just yeah. Saying hi. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Anybody else like to make public comment today? All right. <laughs> Not seeing any. Um, I would like to just give uh, the opportunity here before we adjourn, if there are any other final comments. Um, yes, I see Dr. Shabazz and then Dr. Rhodes. Thank you. I just would emphasize um, one approach is to um, just to recall the some of the areas of, of harm or injury areas we talk about. And, uh, and maybe even in that specific question or question for each of these is just to highlight the question of, of, of healthcare, uh, the questions of education, the question of land, housing, home ownership, uh, the, question, the question of wealth, the wealth gap and wealth formation, and finally, peoplehood and dignity. And, um, and I say this also in relation to planning for, for future um, listening sessions. What about having a spotlight on a specific, one of these specific areas? So a listening session that can be open to anything, but could specifically raise the question of home ownership, Black Black home ownership in Amherst, and the question of of space, of land, of of, of um, uh, or or on another occasion, uh, looking at education, the academic achievement gap, the different disparities in terms of um, uh, college going rates, in terms of discipline discipline rates, in terms of uh, other areas that we note a, a racialized disparity in our very own Amherst uh, regional uh, school system and, and elementary school system. These would be then areas in which we could then elicit very concrete suggestions if people would say in the area of education, feel like, you know, if we had uh, uh, additional counseling services or people um, specifically with awareness and lived experience of the African-American community. Maybe they'd speak to something like that or um, someone specifically to help with preparing folks to submit their information to the Common App and to, to apply for college. Um, uh, I, I'll tell you, we're, we have a, a young person finishing high school this year and in my own home, this is a, this is a major effort to try to figure out the, the resource, navigate the resources necessary to get the common app completed and letters of recommendation requested from people. And, you know, and I shudder to think of folks that are working, you know, two and three different jobs and, and all kinds of things just for basic survival, the challenges that might be on those kinds of families to to be able to to get this common app stuff done and FAF, FAFSA and navigate all these things. What are the resources in our schools to help uh, uh, students in general, but our black students in particular? Maybe people would speak to these things if we open the discussion around specific harm areas and in specific uh, asking for specific uh, testimonials as well as suggestions about what what people uh, think would benefit would benefit uh, the community. Thank you. Absolutely, I think that's great. And I know Pamela had spoken to something similarly um, previously. And so, 
Uh, we should talk at our next meeting about that next listening session for folks who weren't who are in the audience um, who weren't here in the beginning. Our next listening session is Wednesday, January 11th from 6.30 to 8.30. It will be entirely virtual and it will be uh, partially educational and then um, go into the listening piece. Um, Dr. Rhodes. So I'm uh, really uh, honored that uh, Emil Carr Chavez Jr. appeared before this pan panel. I did not know that uh, Dr. Chavez had uh, Emil Carr Jr. I mean, I just can't imagine if my son, Dr. Rhodes, appeared on here and spoke. Uh, I would really like to have, see more of these kind of interactions, especially with the mail car, the mail car. I think that was very special. So I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. And I saw that in Deborah's eyes too. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Um, and it's a family affair today. I don't. I hope uh, Dr. D. Shabazz wouldn't mind me <laughs> mentioning that she's also here with us in the audience. So um, that is really special. So, <laughs> um, alrighty. Um, so, if there aren't any other questions or comments, I'm gonna um, move to adjourn. But one last call. All right. Well, everyone have a wonderful week and adjourning at 3.23 p.m. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great meeting. Mm -hmm.